Necros has always been a very interesting Warframe, from dominating the loot farms to, uh, dominating the loot farms. Yeah, it's no surprise as to why he's a fan favorite. Tanky as hell, provides a ton of health regeneration, has amazing armor reduction power and crowd control, and is generally considered a badass Warframe. But how did Necros get here? Necros is considered one of the best Warframes at the moment, but was that always the case on release? Well, today we're going to explore the dark arts of this Necromancer and see what Necros is all about. So, Necros first dropped on Update 10, which was a pretty big expansion for the game, introducing Mag Prime, the new Golem boss fight on the Derelict, which was the free path of obtaining Necros, as well as the reintroduction of Survival, now being a permanent game mode which players can grind on. Overall, a much better update than the last one we covered here. And fun fact, Necros actually launched on Friday the 13th too, since he was the undead Warframe, and not only that, having a max rank redirection on base Necros will boost his shields to a very specific number of 666. But spooky shenanigans aside, Necros was actually a pretty solid Warframe. He had good crowd control and lots of utility. Unfortunately, he was on the squishier side, but that's okay because Necros had one very important ability that no other Warframe or companion possessed at the time and also made Necros stand out from the rest of the crowd. Desecrate Necros will conjure dark magic and reroll dead bodies within range, allowing them to drop loot once again after death. This is the ability that really defined Necros, and to this day, it's one of the major reasons as to why he's so popular and highly valued. Desecrate was excellent. In a time where boosters didn't exist, and everyone and their mother was playing Trinity, Desecrate was a fantastic ability if you really want to speed up the grind. Plus, Desecrate used to have an astronomical loot chance of 90%, compared to the 54% it has today. Unfortunately though, Necros only had Desecrate. Now don't get me wrong, Shadows of the Dead, Terrify, and Soul Punch were all good abilities for the time, but they didn't get the buffs and reworks that makes them good today. Back then, the Shadows had a far higher cap, but you could not walk through them. Shield of Shadows also didn't exist, so Necros couldn't really tank from his minions. Terrify didn't get its big boost to armor reduction, and its augment creeping Terrify was not issued into the game yet. And Soul Punch, while well, there, it was actually a pretty okay first ability for light CC and light damage. Ironically though, he could desecrate his own minions for more loot, which was pretty strange, but a nice touch. Gave some form of synergy. Necros didn't really offer a whole lot when it came to high level defense missions, and in terms of support, he was really just outclassed by Trinity in almost every aspect. However, despite this, Necros had some excellent qualities that made him stand out. In terms of solo play, Necros was excellent. He had great sustainability with Desecrate, and his CC while a bit finicky was still useful. Desecrate was considered by some a completely useless ability, mainly because it was a single use, so you couldn't toggle an aura around Necros to Desecrate constantly. However, other players still found good value out of Desecrate because, well, getting more loot in a looter shooter is good. Especially for boss farms, Necros was pretty alright, being able to Desecrate the bodies for more loot. Necros, while having some visible flaws in his kit, was still a pretty solid Warframe, and for the rest of 2013 and into 2014, he remained as a pretty decent Warframe. Necros was single-handedly redefined because of this mod. And now I know what you're thinking. How did a mag mod alter Necros in any way? The reason for this is due to how Greedy Pull used to function. You see, on release, Greedy Pull became the strongest mod in the entire game. This was meta-defining and changed loot farms forever. Greedy Pull allowed Mag to use Pull and, well, pull loot towards her in a very wide radius while also ragdolling enemies closer and closer with each cast. The key difference was, Greedy Pull was the first time players had seen a universal vacuum. Greedy Pull used to pull not only loot for just Mag, but also for the entire team. This meant that if a loot drop was 50 meters away from you, Mag can just Greedy Pull it to you. This was game changing for Necros as now Necros entered a new position in the meta. What was once a decent all around Warframe now became vital to every loot farm in the entire game. And Necros now rooted himself in the meta as the go to loot frame. His Desecrate was a perfect match with Mag's Greedy Pull, as you would constantly pull loot towards a team while the DPS or Mag was doing their job, 
constantly killing enemies in rapid succession. E-Gate was one of the many farms and was an excellent farming spot for planetary materials, and Necros reigned supreme. And once Hydroid got his new Pilfering Swarm, the two would sometimes see usage together, stacking Desecrate and the Pilfering bonus. However, Hydroid was mainly used for more low-level and casual loot farms, as his tentacles were really inconsistent at times and had low DPS. Necros, on the other hand, was a passive looter frame that didn't need to do any killing, and as a result, he saw huge usage alongside super optimized setups with Rhino, Speed Nova, Mag, Banshee, Trinity, and Vauban, and also sometimes Excalibur. In short, Necros became the king of endless mid to high level loot farms, and to further increase your capabilities, teams often ran slash damage especially with Vauban and Speed Nova. The reason for this was because slash damage allowed you to split bodies into two pieces, and Necros was able to surprisingly desecrate both body parts, which yielded in more total loot drops. This was also further propelled with Viral. Now, despite having a great presence in the meta, Necros still had one big issue on his sleeve. You see, one might look at Necros and view him as a loot god in these team comms. While on the other hand, some tend to look at Necros being no more than an AFK frame. The reason for this is due to his abilities not working properly in any real way. Soul Punch wasn't that great and didn't synergize with Terrify or Shadows. Terrify didn't get his augment until 2 years later, but even then its energy cost was somewhat high and again didn't really bring Necros together. And Shadows of the Dead were starting to show its age. All Necros had was just a secret spam. It almost felt like he wasn't even an actual Warframe. Despoil further solidified this role as now Necros can just spam this ability for free, which increased the efficacy of the Greedy Pull team comms. But despite this, ironically, he was one of the most important frames during this era of the game, despite being very gimmicky to use. Thankfully, update 15.12 gave Necros much needed buffs. Terrify was buffed, it can affect more enemies, and can now be recastable and will prioritize unaffected targets on cast. The range was also slightly reduced from 20 meters to 15, which is a bit unnecessary. Shadows of the Dead, on the other hand, received a big boost to the minions. They now have more health and deal more damage, and you can now finally walk through the shadows like they are actual shadows. Soul Punch, on the other hand, uh... Well, you can cast it in any direction. These changes were excellent, however, things started to really shine for Necros come patch 16.4, Shield of Shadows. And here is where Necros really started to come into his own. Despite being relegated as an AFK frame in the general meta, Necros was silently building up his undead army in the shadows. Shield of Shadows allowed Necros to negate incoming damage by using his shadows, so the shadows will take damage in his stead. Thanks to this augment, Necros can tank like a complete boss, being able to negate huge amounts of damage, and when facing hordes of enemies on higher level missions, Necros wouldn't even break a sweat. However, despite achieving newfound tanking properties, Necros still remained under the shadows of the general meta, and most players enjoyed using Necros as a looter frame instead of delving into his other builds. And unfortunately, despite having more diverse builds to change up his playstyle, Necros still remained as an AFK looter frame, and going into 2016, that didn't really change. The name of the game is Loot, and Necros was really good at that. Even if you don't like the way he plays, he's still valuable for doing just that. But thankfully, after many years of patiently waiting, Necros finally got his big rework. Desecrate is now a toggle ability, meaning you don't have to sit in one place and spam it again and again. This single change was game changing, as now Necros players can finally play the game and not be tasked with sitting in a spot for hours on end. But unfortunately, this rework was more of a trade off than anything. Desecrate had its loot chance drastically lowered from 90% to 54%, and the bodies will now desecrate together after the first corpse. This meant that bodies that wouldn't drop loot would still be piled together into Desecrate, whereas before, you could Desecrate bodies again and again for more loot. And now that all bodies vanished after Desecrate, this meant that your loot gains weren't as high as before. Although, again, it's largely dependent on your RNG, so in some cases you won't see a big difference at all. But, in all fairness, this was still a positive change for Necros, as being able to Desecrate bodies while moving and playing the game was a big win. Shadows of the Dead, on the other hand, got quite the mixed reception. 
Now, you can heal the shadows upon recasting the ability, which is fantastic, but unfortunately, the max cap of shadows has been drastically reduced to just 7. Although, if you summon a summoner type enemy, you can still go past the 7 mob cap. Shadows of the Dead will also now prioritize heavy units and stronger enemies like heavy gunners and nullifiers, which was an indirect buff to Shield of Shadows as heavy enemies are tankier and harder to kill than the regular Lancers. The Shadows also now have a health drain, and this drain is affected by duration, but because you can recast the Shadows, you can essentially keep your Shadows up as long as you're paying attention to their HP. And since the Shadows have been capped to 7, Power Strength now affects the Shadows' health, whereas before, High Strength meant you got more total shadows. Overall, this rework was a positive one, but it came with a few hefty and somewhat unnecessary nerfs and changes. Some were even considering using Hydroid or Atlas for loot farming over Necros due to the fact that Desecrate got its loot chance and body mechanic nerfed. But others soon realized that because Necros is now a fully playable Warframe, he can make more use of his other maws to synergize with his 3 and to spoil. Now that the third spell is a toggle, Necros can make better use of Equilibrium as well, which will give him energy to use his other abilities. And Health Conversion was also another big boost to Necros' armor rating by a huge amount, thus making him even tankier than before. These changes may seem a bit mixed at first glance, but they were huge improvements for Necros as a whole, and come Silver Grove 3, this Necromancer finally got primed. Now that Necros can actually play Warframe, he wasted no time and got to work. Shadow Step was one of the strongest abilities in the entire game, and Necros specialized in melee strikes, due to him being able to desecrate body parts off dead enemies. Melee just so happened to work perfectly with an Aramon Tree, enabling the infinite invisibility, and synergizing perfectly with Blood Rush and Body Count which further boosted the melee damage. The stealth bug with Gas also made that element extremely potent, and as a result, Necros Necros saw crazy use on Endless Survivals due to the fact that he can sustain life support far better than any other Warframe at the time. He became a melee murder machine that kept on desecrating loot. Some could argue that this was Necros at his peak, abusing the game to no end. While well, yes, every other frame can go invisible with Shadow Step and receive the astronomical gas damage bonus, Necros on the other hand worked a lot better due to the fact that he had free health regeneration and life support sustainability. Necros also helped form the absolutely mental team comp with the secure Electa, being able to desecrate bodies for more loot, which included credits. As a result, players were farming credits like it was no tomorrow before the end. Necros also brought us the Tigris Prime and Galatine Prime, which were single-handedly the two strongest weapons in the entire game, boasting astronomical stats, and the Galatine itself loved the old Temple Royale. Plus, this was a top-tier melee for, surprise surprise, Neramon. Necros also saw good use on the Silver Grow Spectres, being able to reroll their bodies for a second chance at Aura Mods. Furthermore, Necros also saw amazing use on the Vodinoi Arena and became a staple frame for that endo farm. And finally, going forward into December of 2016, Necros saw again a huge boost to his play rate all because of the newly introduced Hema Infested Rifle, which had players farm an enormous amount of mutagen samples. Necros once again helped alleviate the grind, to some extent. Samples were still a pain in the ass to farm for, even on the derelict, so really just depended on your patience. Necros was good, because if you want to farm anything, you'd play him. His rework helped him become a fully fledged Warframe, not just a niche AFK frame that spammed one spell. And thankfully, he ended the year successfully. Condition Overload also got introduced in December, and this mod further propelled Necros to new heights of melee dominance and power. Now, going forward into 2017 and 2018, Necros remained as a good Warframe. New mods, toys, and more power creep just helped Necros get better and better. And while Neramon did get his overhaul so Shadow Step was removed, that didn't bother Necros a whole lot because he isn't a squishy caster frame anymore. However, there was one very important patch for Necros that did hinder his desecrate significantly. This was back in Vacuum Within 3, where Necros could desecrate a piece of a corpse causing the timer to be reset for the other pieces of the same corpse. 
this is how it always functioned. However, this patch ended up nerfing that. In short, Necros could no longer split bodies and desecrate both parts anymore. However, it's actually unsure as to when this was reverted, since the only post I could find about this online was another loot nerf which we'll discuss later on. We do know this change was reverted, as Necros can now split bodies and desecrate both parts once again. But if you do find a post about it or know when it's been reverted, then do let us know in the comments down below. While being a hefty blow to his farm capabilities, Necros still remained as a generally good looter frame, and throughout most of 2017, nothing really changed. Melee weapons were still broken, Necros still had to spoil, and loot was constantly being generated under his command. And while yes, the infamous stealth gas was nerfed, that didn't really affect Necros severely. Slash was still his go-to element, and Viral complemented it nicely. Necros was also very good for events like the pacifism defect, which dropped a ton of mutagen samples, as well as toroid farming in Fortuna. However, come patch 21.4, the Abyssal Hydroid has risen from the depths of the ocean, and together with Necros, the two absolutely dominated every loot farm in the entire game. Hydroid's rework propelled him to new heights, and the two were able to officially stack their looting powers, which yielded in crazy amount of drops. And going forward, these two became the go-to for every loot farm in the entire game, especially on Uranus Survival, where Hydroid was simply AFK with his tentacles and undertow, while Necros would constantly desecrate the dead bodies. It was a glorious sight to see, as these two were reunited once again after so many years. And come update 24.7, Korra now got the infamous pilfering strangle dome, and the three sometimes saw use together. Although Korra was much better at getting her pilfering kills in Hydroid, it didn't matter a whole lot since Necros was desecrating a pilfering corpse every time anyways. And this was further boosted with the comb, which people often ran cold and slash because cold used to split bodies and that worked for desecrate. However, this functionality of cold was later removed. And unfortunately, things were about to take a drastic turn for our looting trio with the most controversial update Warframe has ever seen. Update 25 Update 25 was a massive update for the game. We got the new Jupiter Talset rework, we got Wisp, the Fallman, and of course the new Disruption game mode. But more importantly, we got a very big nerf to the classic trio in this patch. Update 25 has nerfed almost every loot frame in the game, excluding Ivara. When we added the Nightwave challenge for the Silver Grove, we encouraged a return to content that normally would have been fine. A small handful of players found an exploit, and as we looked into things, we thought we'd fix the issue with the new chase of behavior that could lead to some problems. We didn't. We decided to cut a bit deeper. Ivara's looting ability is now the only one that stacks with other looting because it works while alive. If a target is dead, a successful loot now happens once, no matter the source. However, multiple can attempt to loot the same body. Yes, this is different from how it previously behaved, but this is the new intended behavior. This was a huge blow to Necros, Korra, Atlas, and Hydroid, as you can no longer stack looting frames together. But more importantly, Necros received the big brunt of this nerf, mainly because his looting ability is a passive aura. This meant that if you had a Korra or Hydroid doing any of the killing, your Desecrate would not re-roll the bodies for extra loot, which included health orbs. This meant that Necros would only gather health orbs from the initial 60% off of dead bodies, which drastically hindered his synergy with health conversion and equilibrium. As a result, this was a huge blow to his tanking capabilities and synergy. Necros's usage in public lobbies started to dwindle. Korra and Hydroid were still pretty popular at the time, so it didn't help Necros in any way. If you were a Necros main during this time and found a Korra or Hydroid just popping into your lobby, it was bad news and a fundamental part of your kit was severely hindered. Thankfully, five grueling months later with update 25.8, these changes were reverted, and Necros could safely play alongside other looter frames again. It's really bizarre as to why they nerfed these frames, most likely due to the fact that they released a mod drop booster, so they wanted players to purchase a booster instead of using the frames together to synergize for similar results without paying. 
It's incredibly scummy at best, but more importantly, it ruined the team aspect for Necros, and his kit became dampened in a public lobby, and as a result, he was relegated to solo play for a while. Good news for us though is that this was the last time Necros had gotten any big nerf. From here on out, it's an uphill gain. While Hydroid may have fallen out of the meta, Korra made way and the two crushed most loot farms working together in perfect synergy. The introduction of Steel Path further solidified their synergy and both Necros and Korra were vital to the early Steel Essence farms on Endless Survival. Ironically, Korra was the one who received the nerfs and Necros was largely unaffected afterwards despite contributing to a good portion of the drops. And with the introduction of Update 27.2, Necros became even better, as Slash Damage no longer bypassed Shield, and with the introduction of Rank 5 Arcanes, he no longer had to double stack Arcane Fury or Arcane Strike, instead using both Arcanes. The new Viral also boosts his DPS, which helps sustain him in Endless Survivals. Necros also got a nice armor boost which did help increase the synergy with health conversion. And with the introduction of a shield gate, this helped Necros even more. Although shadows will tank a bulk of the damage instead, having that extra protection was nice. Necros just became better. That's really it. However, Necros was about to receive another monumental boost in the form of a new game-changing system. Heart of Deimos. With the introduction of Deimos, our third open world, Necros became even better. Why? Simple. The Helmet System. The new subsume system allowed frames to mix and match abilities. This meant that you can replace an ability on a Warframe with a different power. And if you didn't like Soul Punch, just swap it with something else. And because of this simple yet effective mechanic, Necros rose to new heights and became even better. The build options start to open up even more for Necros as now you didn't have to rely on Shadows of the Dead for tanking. You could further boost your kit with Pillage, Roar, or Warcry to enhance melee weapons even more. The possibilities were endless as Necros was one of the best Warframes with the Subzume system. Eclipse was also another great addition to Necros because with Total Eclipse, you can boost the damage of your own shadows. So if you felt like your shadows were lacking in the DPS department, Mirage's Augment will definitely fix that. And come update 30, Necros became even stronger with the introduction of Gloom. Necros just kept on getting better and better, but it didn't even stop there. Update 29.5 just before revamped Soul Punch, so now the ability will kill an enemy instantly if its health is under 25%, and turns them into a shadow for Necros or heals existing shadows at max. And Soul Punch will now mark enemies. Killing marked enemies will become a shadow if possible. While these changes didn't make Soul Punch OP overnight, it was still an excellent quality of life update and the ability did see some niche but viable usage. And honestly, that 25% insta-kill wasn't too bad. Necros, after all this time, still remained as a very respectable and top-tier Warframe, one that was great for loot farms and synergized extremely well with Korra, but also became a genuine Warframe on his own due to his tanking and CC powers, as well as his crazy synergy with Desecrate and various mods. While other frames got heavily nerfed, Necros didn't die. The new Arcanes helped his kit, the new weapons and power creep just benefited Necros, and the new Subzume system gave new life and diversity for him. But Necros Necros was about to get another monumental improvement for his kit, despite being considered one of the most controversial changes we've seen in recent times. Update 31.5 The Angels of Zarimon now this update introduced a lot of new content. We got the new Zarimon ship tile set, new weapons, Gyre, which unfortunately got nerfed shortly after her release, and more importantly, the Eximus rework. Eximus enemies were always a bane for many players and many frames. These so-called heavy enemies were supposed to be the tough big baddies amongst the mobs. These Eximus enemies have been introduced on patch 12, but they've remained the same ever since up until now. Eximus enemies used to be these frustrating units that would just suck up your energy in plain sight or blast you away unexpectedly. While the concept of the Eximus was an interesting addition, they just served as a way to frustrate the player. Eximus enemies were pretty hard to detect and didn't drop new rewards compared to their regular counterparts. Especially on endless missions, Eximus enemies were just piled up amongst the hordes of fodder lancers and butchers. It became extremely frustrating to deal with them accordingly. 
Thankfully, with Eximus Reborn in Update 31.5, this updated the Eximus enemies so they are no longer hidden in plain sight, but are actual visible mini bosses players can spot and deal with. Eximus Unit has got an entire visual overhaul and design. All enemies will be visible in sight and clear for the player, so there isn't any element of surprise. No longer are you left wondering where all of your energy went, or how you got one-shotted by a toxin. All Eximus elements were updated and improved. However, they received another change that was monumental. Overguard. This simple addition of an extra health ensured enemies wouldn't get one-shotted. However, this new health bar had one key property that put most CC-focused frames out of business. They were immune to crowd control effects of Warframe powers and elements. This meant that you couldn't freeze an Eximus with Frost Avalanche or stun them with Volt Shock. Because of this, players had to prioritize damage over CC, which hurt CC frames even more, as up until this point, CC was starting to show its age and had no real place in the game as new content was just focused on damage. And unfortunately, a certain Riftwalker didn't like this change. But Necros sure did. Necros was the only Warframe in the entire game that loved this new Overguard mechanic. Well, why is that you might ask? When you kill an enemy as Necros, you can summon them as your shadow minion. Patch 20.6 allowed Necros to finally summon Eximus enemies, which was great, but more importantly, you'd receive their benefits if applicable. Now that Eximus units had an overguard, this meant that if you killed an Eximus unit, you would summon them and they would retain the overguard health. This was a monumental boost to the survivability of the Shadows as now they had Overguard and were literally unstoppable. Necros got the biggest possible buff to the Shadows we've ever seen and it was all thanks to a mechanic that negatively impacted every other CC focused Warframe. But to think that things ended there, you're wrong. Necros got another buff. In Veilbreaker, Terrify finally got a direct upgrade. Its armor reduction was boosted from the minimal 20% to an astronomical 60% at base. This meant that with the minimal strength mods, you would completely remove the armor of enemies in radius of a single Terrify cast. This was another monumental buff that Necros adored, and it also helped that Veilbreaker finally improved armor reduction, so using two casts of Terrify alone would completely remove 100% of the enemy's armor. And, uh, Soul Survivor got buffed too. But the Terrify change really pushed Necros forward, and he became extremely strong. Like, very, very strong. Necros had literally everything going for him, tanking with his shadows, desecrating loot, removing armor in a very wide radius, and providing support for the team with health orbs and CC. With the subsume system and Archon shards, Necros became the ultimate necromancer. A frame like Necros you'd assume would fall off after each major update, but due to the nature of his playstyle and abilities, Necros didn't care about the power creep. Everything just benefits him. Because of the changes over the past two years, Necros has been widely considered the most improved Warframe, and it's no surprise as to why that's the case. And what's even more impressive is how consistent the buffs were with each major update. It wasn't just a single patch that improved his abilities, it was over the course of many updates and years. With all of that said, Necros reigns supreme in the current meta, a god for loot and nigh unkillable. So let's check out this undead warrior and see what Necros is all about in 2023. Now, despite everything I've said about Necros and how great he's become, he does possess a few key problems that make his kit feel a bit more awkward than most frames. I know I could have mentioned this before in the script, but I uh, didn't really feel like being overly negative during his rework. Necros requires a lot of work, and its builds are somewhat expensive, utilizing mods like health and energy conversion, equilibrium, and outside abilities like gloom. Not only that, Necros benefits a lot from arcanes like multi-augmented, efficiency, and vigor. Other characters don't need as big of a band-aid as Necros does because their abilities will still function cohesively without huge hassle or investment. Baruch is a pretty good example. You don't need Reactive Storm and a stat stick to push Baruch to be good. His abilities at base function great, and everything you add onto Baruch is just a bonus. Necros, on the other hand, is very reliant on said band-aid. It's not necessarily a bad thing, as you should be using the tools and toys the game gives you to make a good build for your liking, but I can't help Help but feel a bit short-handed with Necros at default when compared to other frames at default. However, despite this, the reward is certainly worth it. 
Necross is one of the few frames that excels incredibly well once built. Necross's passive is glorious for melee setups. Necross heals 5 HP anytime an enemy dies within 10 meters of him, and this passive applies to your companions as well. This passive is excellent because it further synergizes with the spoil and gives Necross a lot of healing power for just killing things. And Necross's first ability is Soul Punch. Necross will lunge with a telekinetic force dealing impact damage and knocking down a single enemy within 50 meters at base. If the enemy is below 25% health, it's instantly killed, which is pretty useful for heavy enemies. The downside though is that this ability is very expensive and it has a huge ragdoll effect, making it very difficult to follow up and kill the marked enemy within 3 seconds. You also cannot modify the harvest mark, so it's all always at 3 seconds. But if you do kill a marked enemy, and if you're under the shadow's cap, that enemy becomes a shadow. However, if you are at the max cap, all shadows will heal to full, which is pretty nice. But despite this, you're better off just recasting shadows anyways to heal them, as it's far easier and more consistent at times, and definitely cheaper. Soul Punch does have one augment called Soul Survivor, which was buffed during Veilbreaker, and in terms of support, it's not that bad, as you'll instantly revive an ally which is cool and it won't drain your energy entirely now. However, Necros has other forms of support that are far more easier and more consistent. It's not a horrible augment if you're carrying new players around and it's an easy revive but it's sorta of worthless in most situations. Necross's second ability is Terrify. Necross will cast fear into his enemies nearby which causes them to flee for a short period of time. Terrify is also an armor reduction ability and at 167% power strength, you can fully remove armor in a single cast. And in all honesty, it's a pretty dang good ability. It's a pretty wide armor reduction power and it's fast. It's also one of the cheaper armor strips in the game. But unfortunately, Terrify has one critical issue and that is enemies flee very quickly, thus making it hard for you to snap kills once you've terrified a horde. You can alleviate this with Gloom, but it's still frustrating that the mobs just disperse at base. And if you don't want to use Gloom, you might opt for Creeping Terrify, but then you'd have to sacrifice a slot for it. Already, the spoil is an auto-install, so you might have to tinker your setup for it to work. And due to how big the radius is on Terrify, you can actually easily scare rooms of enemies away and reduce their armor. On that merit alone, it's a very valuable and very potent ability, despite its key flaw. Necross's third ability is one of the best abilities in the entire game, and is a large reason as to why Necross is used in the first place for many players. Desecrate Necross will conjure a dark aura around him that affects every corpse in radius, consuming corpses granting a 60% chance to spawn a health orb and a 54% chance to roll the corpse drop table again to produce additional loot. After a 2 second delay on the first corpse within range, all other corpses are consumed one at a time in random order, with subsequent bodies consumed at a rate of 3 bodies per second. The drop chance and corpse consumption rate are not affected by mods, and this doesn't cause extra reactants to drop on fissure missions. However, what's really neat about Desecrate is that you can have up to 3 health orbs on a single body, one from the initial 60% chance, again as a regular loot, and one more time from Desecrate re-rolling. Enemies that also have an empty drop table will drop health orbs this way as well. But what pushes Desecrate even further though is the synergy it has with other Warframes and Necros himself. Desecrate is a passive looting aura. This means that you can stack it with loot on kill abilities like Pilfering Swarm, Pilfering Strangle Dome, and Atlas's Or Gaze. And even though Desecrate itself won't stack with other Desecrates, you can still use multiple Desecrates to cover bodies in a large radius before they disappear. This is present on the Vodinoi Arena, as the optimal setup is using two Necros to cover the bodies quicker. And to further add to Desecrate, it will also work if you split a body in half with slash damage. However, each limb won't count, only large sections of a corpse. This means that you can roll again for more loot on the same body. Unfortunately, cold damage doesn't work anymore, so you will have to rely on slash for the splitting effect to work. But Desecrate on its own is an excellent ability, generating a lot of health orbs for Necros and the team, as well as making synergies with health conversion and equilibrium work. But more importantly, it has the mind-bending despoil augment, which allows Necros to desecrate for free.
This spoil allows Necros to desecrate with his health. This means that if you constantly desecrate bodies, which drop health orbs, you're regenerating your health almost every time a body is being desecrated. Plus, with Equilibrium, you're constantly generating energy. This ability itself and augment is mental because not only can you get more loot and resources, you can also keep your health up forever, thus making Necros almost unkillable. The best part about Desecrate is that it's not an active power, it's an aura, meaning you can just play the game and mind your own business. It synergizes so well with Korra and for team farms. Necros is absolutely beneficial, even though its loot chance was drastically lowered to 54%, Desecrate is still valuable. It opens up so many synergies and is very new player friendly, as new players don't have to worry about their energy economy or health depleting. Plus, you just get more loot. It cuts the grind by a significant margin. The only downside to Desecrate is that Despoil is an auto-install for many builds, since Desecrating with energy is actually very expensive, so you're better off using your health instead. But because you're using your health, you can preserve your energy for something more... sinister. Necros raises the dead. Literally. Necros will summon the enemies he has slain into his own shadow minions. Shadows of the dead will also prioritize the strongest enemy groups among those killed to summon. The shadows also retain the level and their stats of their former selves, but will gain a 150% damage boost and a 100% boost to health and shields. However, each shadow will lose 3% of their health per second when active. The copies also spawn randomly within 10 meters of Necros and will fight for him until they die to enemy fire or disintegrate from the decay. The damage, shield, and health boost are affected by strength while the number of active shadows are not and are soft capped at 7. However, if Necros summons a summoner type enemy, you can go past this cap. Shadows of the Dead damage and defense boost are additive bonus that are applied to the shadow's total damage and total health, but there is no way to prematurely kill a shadow, so if you want to summon stronger shadows, you have to self-destruct or wait for them to die. The decay on the shadows themselves, however, are affected by duration. But thankfully, the shadows do have a race threat level, so they do take priority with enemy aggression, and kills done by the shadow grant the player 50% of the kill XP to their Warframe, which is a nice touch if you're leveling Necros. And finally, Eximus enemies that are spawned will keep their Overguard, which gives them more resilience, however, their health will still decay despite having an Overguard. Shadows of the Dead is an excellent ability, however, there are a few key problems that stick out. The Shadows AI, while okay, isn't anything special, and oftentimes you'd hope they were smarter and more coordinated. The Shadows serve more as a bullet sponge than anything, so don't rely on them to do any killing for you. The second issue is with this mod scaling. Shadows of the Dead requires both duration and strength to boost its stats. And both stats work hand in hand for the shadows, but because you have one mod slot dedicated for the spoil and another for health, you do have to sacrifice some efficiency or another stat. But if you do drop efficiency, you want to at least keep equilibrium to offset it. And if you don't run a defensive subzoom in particular, you may want to look at Shield of Shadows. Shield of Shadows allows Necros to essentially tank off his minions, and while the soft cap is 7 shadows, you can go past it with summoner enemies which will further benefit Shield of Shadows giving you very high damage reduction. However, at times it can feel a bit redundant because your shadows are aggroing most of the enemies anyways, but still nonetheless an excellent mod to have. Not only that, Shadows of the Dead is also by far one of the coolest abilities in the game, and even though Necros is expensive to build, the build possibilities are insane. There are so many different ways to play Necros in 2023 that is almost mind-boggling. Petrify, Pillage, Gloom, and Piercing Roar, just to name a few. There are other options where you can shield gate and not slot a health mod instead, specking for more ability stats. Surely a diverse Necromancer. And over the years, Necros has earned his title, the King of Shadows. While Korra may be more appealing to the average Redditor, this edgelord is still kicking it, and I highly recommend giving him a spin if you haven't done so. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more in the future, then be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Your support is greatly appreciated. Let me know your thoughts about Necros down below, and I'll see you next time.